Chapter 10 And Shemuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because Yahuwah has anointed you leader over his inheritance? When you leave me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's burial place in the border of Benjamin at Zeltzach. And they shall say to you, The donkeys which you went to look for have been found. And see, your father has left the matters of the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, What shall I do for my son? And you shall pass on from there and beyond and shall come to the terebinth tree of Tavor. And the three men going up to Elohim at Bethel shall find you there, one bearing three young goats, another bearing three loaves of bread, and another bearing a skin of wine. And they shall greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall accept from their hand. And after that, go to the hill of Elohim, where the Philistines' watchpost is. And it shall be when you have come there to the city, that you shall meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with a stringed instrument, and a tambourine, and a flute, and a lyre before them. And they are prophesying. And the Spirit of Yahuwah shall come upon you, and you shall prophesy with them and be turned into another man. And it shall be when these signs come to you, do for yourself as your hand finds to do, for Elohim is with you. And you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and see I am coming down to you to offer ascending offerings and slaughter, slaughterings of peace offerings. Wait seven days till I come to you. Then I shall make known to you what you should do. And it came to be when he had turned his back to go from Shemuel that Elohim gave him another heart. And all those signs came on that day. And they came there to the hill and saw a group of prophets to meet him. And the spirit of Elohim came upon him and he prophesied in their midst. And it came to be all who knew him formerly looked and saw that he prophesied among the prophets. So the people said to each other, What is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Is Shaul also among the prophets? And a man there answered and said, And who is their father? That is why it became a proverb. Is Shaul also among the prophets? And when he stopped prophesying, he went to the high place. And the uncle of Shoal asked him and his servant, Where did you go? And he said, To look for the donkeys. And when we saw that they were nowhere to be found, we went to Shemuel. And the uncle of Shoal said, Please inform me what Shemuel said to you. And Shaul said to his uncle, He informed us plainly that the donkeys had been found. But he did not disclose to him about the matter of the rain, what Shemuel had said. And Shemuel called the people together to Yahuwah at Mitzpah, and said to the children of Israel, Thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, I have brought Israel up out of Mitzrayim, and delivered you from the hand of the Mitzrites, and from the hand of all the rains from those who oppressed you. And today... You have rejected your Elohim, who himself saved you out of all of your evils and your distresses. And you have said to him, No, but set a sovereign over us. And now present yourselves before Yahuwah by your tribes and by your clans. And Shemuel brought near all the tribes of Israel, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken. Then he brought near the tribe of Benjamin by their clans, and the clan of Matri was taken, and Shaul, son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. And they asked again of Yahuwah, Has the man come here yet? And Yahuwah answered, See, he has hidden by the baggage. And they ran and brought him from there, and he stood in the midst of the people. And he was taller than any of the people from his shoulders and upwards. And Shemuel said to all the people, Do you see him 
whom Yahuwah has chosen, that there is no one like him among all the people. All the people shouted and said, Let the sovereign live! And Shemuel declared to the people the rulings of the reign and wrote it in a book and placed it before Yahuwah. And Shemuel sent all the people away, each to his house. And Shemuel went to his house too, to Gibeah. And with him went brave men whose hearts Elohim had touched. But the sons of Belial said, What? Does this one save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents. But he kept silent. Chapter 11 And Nahash the Ammonite came up and camped against Yabesh Gilead. And all the men of Yabesh said to Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we shall serve you. Then Nahash the Ammonite answered them, For this I make a covenant with you, that I dig out all your right eyes, and I shall bring reproach on all Yisrael. And the elders of Yabash said to him, Leave us alone for seven days, so that we send messengers to all the borders of Yisrael. And then, if there is no one to save us, we shall come out to you. And the messengers came out to Gibeah of Shaul, and spoke the words in the hearing of the people. And the people lifted up their voices and wept. And look, Shaul was coming behind the herd from the field. And Shaul said, Why are the people weeping? And they related to him the words of the men of Yabesh. And the spirit of Elohim came upon Shaul mightily as he heard these words, and his displeasure burned greatly. Then he took a yoke of cattle and cut them in pieces and sent them throughout all the border of Israel by the hand of messengers, saying, Whoever does not go out with Shaul and Shemuel to battle, let this be done to his cattle. And the fear of Yahuwah fell on the people, and they came out as one man. And he mustered them in Bezek, and the children of Israel were three hundred thousand, and the men of Yehuda thirty thousand. And they said to the messengers who came, Say this to the men of Yabesh Gilad, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Then the messengers came and informed the men of Yabesh, and they rejoiced. So the men of Yabesh said, Tomorrow we come out to you, and you shall do to us whatever seems good to you. And it came to be on the next day that Shaul put the people in three companies, in the morning watch and struck Ammon until the heat of the day. And it came to be that those left were scattered, so that no two of them were left together. And the people said to Shemuel, Who said, Shall Shaul reign over us? Bring the men so that we put them to death. But Shaul said, No man is to put to death this day, for today... Yahuwah has wrought deliverance in Yisrael. And Shemuel said to the people, Come, and let us go to Gilgal and renew the rain there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they set up Shaul to reign before Yahuwah in Gilgal. There they slaughtered slaughterings of peace offerings before Yahuwah. And there Shaul rejoiced, and all the men of Yisrael very greatly. Chapter 12 And Shemuel said to all Israel, Look, I have listened to your voice in all that you said to me, and have set a sovereign over you. And now, look, the sovereign is walking before you, and I am old and gray. And look, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my youth to this day. Look, here I am. Witness against me before Yahuwah and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I oppressed? Whom have I abused? Or from whose hand have I received any bribe with which to blind my eyes? Then I restore it to you. And they said, You have not oppressed us or abused us 
nor have you taken any bribe from anyone's hand. So he said to them, Yahuwah is witness against you, and his anointed is witness today, that you have found not in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Then Shemuel said to the people, It is Yahuwah who appointed Moshe and Aharon, and who brought your fathers up from the land of Mitzrayim. And now stand still, so that I judge you before Yahuwah concerning all the righteous acts of Yahuwah, which he did to you and to your fathers. And when Yaakov had come to Mitzrayim, and your fathers cried out to Yahuwah, then Yahuwah sent Moshe and Aharon, who brought your fathers out of Mitzrayim, and made them dwell in this place. But they forgot Yahuwah, their Elohim. So he sold them into the hand of Sisera, commander of the army of Hatzor, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hand of the sovereign of Moab. And they fought against them. Then they cried out to Yahuwah and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken Yahuwah and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, and now deliver us from the hand of our enemies, and we serve you. And Yahuwah sent Yerubbabel, and Bidan, and Yifta, and Shemuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies round about you, and you dwelt in safety. And when you saw that Nahash, sovereign of the children of Ammon, came against you, you said to me, No, but let a sovereign reign over us. When Yahuwah, your Elohim, was your sovereign. And now here is the sovereign whom you have chosen and whom you have asked. And see, Yahuwah has set a sovereign over you. If you fear Yahuwah and shall serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the command of Yahuwah, then both you and the sovereign who reigns over you shall follow Yahuwah, your Elohim. But if you do not obey the voice of Yahuwah and shall rebel against the mouth of Yahuwah, then the hand of Yahuwah shall be against you as it was against your fathers. And now stand and see this great matter which Yahuwah does before your eyes. Is today not the wheat harvest? Let me call to Yahuwah so that he sends thunder and rain. Know then and see that your evil is great which you have done in the eyes of Yahuwah in asking for yourselves a sovereign. And Shemuel called to Yahuwah, and Yahuwah sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared Yahuwah and Shemuel. Then all the people said to Shemuel, Pray for your servants to Yahuwah, your Elohim, that we do not die. We have added to all our sins this evil of asking for ourselves a sovereign. And Shemuel said to the people, Do not fear. You have done all this evil. Only do not turn aside from following Yahuwah, and you shall serve Yahuwah with all your heart. And do not turn aside after worthless matters which do not profit or deliver, for they are worthless. For Yahuwah would not cast away his people for his great name's sake, seeing it has pleased Yahuwah to make you his people. Also, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against Yahuwah in ceasing to pray for you. But I shall teach you the good and straight way. Only fear Yahuwah, and you shall serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what marvels he has done for you. But if you persist in doing evil, both you and your sovereign are consumed. Chapter 13 Shaul was thirty years old when he began to reign, and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Shaul chose for himself three thousand men of Israel, and two thousand were with Shaul in Michmash, and in the mountains of Bethel, and a thousand were with Jonathan in Gibna of Benjamin, and the rest of the people he sent away, each to his tent. 
And Jonathan struck the watchpost of the Philistines that was in Geba. And the Philistines heard of it. And Shaul blew with the shofar throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear! And all Israel heard the news that Shaul had stricken a watchpost of the Philistines, and also that Israel had become a stench to the Philistines. And the people were summoned to Shaul at Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered to fight Israel, thirty thousand chariots and six thousand horsemen and people as numerous as the sand on the seashore. And they came up and encamped in Michmash, east of Beth Awan. And the men of Israel saw that they were in trouble, for the people were distressed. And the people hid in caves and in thorny bushes and in rocks and in holes and in pits. And some Hebrews passed over the Yarden to the land of Gad and Gilead, but Shaul was still in Gilgal. And all the people followed him, trembling. And he waited for seven days according to the appointment with Shemuel. But Shemuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Shaul said, Bring an ascending offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the ascending offering. And it came to be as he had finished offering the ascending offering. Look, Shemuel came. And Shaul went out to meet him, to bless him. Then Shemuel said, What have you done? And Shaul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered at Michmash. So I said, the Philistines are going to come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not appeased the face of Yahuwah. So I felt compelled and offered an ascending offering. And Shemuel said to Shaul, You have been foolish. You have not guarded the command of Yahuwah your Elohim, which he commanded you. For now Yahuwah, would have established your reign over Israel forever. But now your reign is not going to stand. Yahuwah shall seek for himself a man after his own heart, and Yahuwah shall command him to be leader over his people, because you have not guarded what Yahuwah commanded you. And Shemuel arose, and went up from Gilgal to Giba, or Benjamin. And Shaul mustered the people who were present with him, about six hundred men. And Shaul and Jonathan his son, and the people who were present with them, remained in Gibeah of Benjamin, while the Philistines camped at Michmash. And from the camp of the Philistines, raiders went out in three companies. The one company turned to the way that leads to Ophrah, to the land of Shual. And another company turned toward the way of Beth Charon, and another company turned toward the way of the border that overlooks the valley of Zeboim, toward the wilderness. Now, no blacksmith could be found in all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. And all Israel went down to the Philistines each one to sharpen his plowshare and his mattock and his axe and his sickle. The charge was a pim for the plowshares and the mattocks and the forks and the axes and to set the points of the goads. And it came to be on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people who were with Shaul and Jonathan, but they were found with Shaul and Jonathan his son. And the outposts of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. Chapter 14 And it came to be one day that Jonathan, the son of Shaul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the outpost of the Philistines, which is on the other side. But he did not inform his father. And Shaul remained at the outskirts of Gibeah under a pomegranate tree at Migron. And the people who were with him were about six hundred men. 
And Ahiah, son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of Yahuwah in Shiloh, was wearing a shoulder garment. And the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. And between the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the outpost of the Philistines, there was an edge of a rock on one side and an edge of a rock on the other side. And the name of one was Botsets, and the name of the other, Senna. The one edge was on the north opposite Michmash, and the other on the south opposite Giba. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the outposts of these uncircumcised. If so be, Yahuwah does work for us, for there is no hindrance for Yahuwah to save by many or by few. And his armor-bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart, and incline yourself. See, I am with you according to your heart. And Jonathan said, See, we are passing over to the men, and show ourselves to them. If they say this to us, Wait until we come to you. Then we shall stand still in our place, and not go up to them. But if they say this, Come up to us. Then we shall go up, for Yahuwah has given them into our hand, and this is the sign to us. And both of them disclosed themselves to the outpost of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, See, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. And the men of the outpost called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up to us and let us teach you a lesson. Then Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come up after me, for Yahuwah has given them into the hand of Yisrael. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer was putting them to death behind him. And that first smiting which Jonathan and his armor bearer struck was about twenty men in about an half an acre of land. And there was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The outposts and the raiders also trembled, and the ground shook, and it became a trembling of Elohim. And the watchmen of Shaul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked and saw the crowd melting away, and they went here and there. And Shaul said to the people who were with him, Please inspect and see who has gone from us. So they inspected and saw that Jonathan and his armor-bearer were missing. And Shaul said to Ahiah, Bring the Ark of Elohim here. For the Ark of Elohim was with the children of Israel on that day. And it came to be while Shaul talked to the priest that the noise which was in the camp of the Philistines went on and became great. So Shaul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. And Shaul was called, and all the people who were with him, and they went to the battle. And see, every man's sword was against his neighbor, a very great confusion. And the Hebrews who were with the Philistines before that time, who went up with them into the camp, turned around, they too, to be with Israel, who were with Shaul and Jonathan. And all the men of Israel who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim heard that the Philistines fled, and they also pursued them in the battle. Thus, Yahuwah saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over to Beth Awan. And the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Shaul had placed the people under oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food until evening, and I am avenged on my enemies. Therefore none of the people tasted food. And all they of the land came into the woods, and there was honey on the ground. And the people came into the woods and saw the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard that his father had taken the oath of the people. And he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put it to his mouth. 
and his eyes lit up. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly took an oath of the people, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food today. And the people were weary. And Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Now see how my eyes lit up when I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had well eaten today of the spoil of their enemies which they had found. For then would not the slaughter among the Philistines have been greater? And they struck the Philistines that day from Michmash to Aelon. So the people were very weary. And the people pounced on the spoil and took sheep and cattle and calves and slew them on the ground. And the people ate with the blood. And they told Shaul, saying, Look, the people are sinning against Yahuwah by eating with the blood. And he said, You have acted treacherously. Roll a large stone to me today. And Shaul said, Scatter among the people and say to them, Each one bring his ox near to me, and each one his sheep. And you shall slay them here and eat. And do not sin against Yahuwah by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night. And slew it there. And Shaul built a slaughter place to Yahuwah. And it was the first slaughter place he built to Yahuwah. And Shaul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them until the morning light and not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, Let us draw near to Elohim here. And Shaul asked of Elohim, should I go down after the Philistines? Do you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. And Shaul said, Come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see what this sin was today. For as Yahuwah lives, who saves Israel? Though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall certainly die. But not one among all the people answered him. And he said to all Israel, you be on one side, and my son Jonathan and I be on the other side. And the people said to Shaul, Do what seems good to you. Then Shaul said to Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, Give a perfect lot. And Shaul and Jonathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Shaul said, Cast lots between my son Jonathan and me. And Jonathan was taken. Shaul then said to Jonathan, Explain to me what you have done. And Jonathan explained to him and said, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand. See, let me die. And Shaul answered, Elohim, do so, and more also, for you shall certainly die, Jonathan. But the people said to Shaul, Should Jonathan die who has wrought this great salvation in Israel? Far be it. As Yahuwah lives, let not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has wrought with Elohim this day. Thus the people ransomed Jonathan, and he did not die. And Shaul returned from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. And Shaul took the reign over Israel and fought against all his enemies round about against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Edom, and against the sovereigns of Zobah, and against the Philistines. And wherever he turned, he inflicted punishment. And he gathered an army and struck the Amalekites, and delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. And the sons of Shaul were Jonathan, and Yishi, and Malkishua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The name of the firstborn, Marab, and the name of the younger, Milkal, and the name of Shaul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Achimatz, and the name of the commander of his army was Abner, son of Ner, uncle of Shaul, and Kish was the father of Shaul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abiel. And there was tough fighting against the Philistines all the days of Shaul. And when Shaul saw any mighty man or any brave man, he took him for himself. Chapter 15 And Shemuel said to Shaul, 
Yahuwah sent me to anoint you sovereign over his people, over Yisrael. And now listen to the voice of the words of Yahuwah. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, I shall punish Amalek for what he did to Yisrael, how he set himself against him on the way when he came up from Mitzrayim. Now go, and you shall strike Amalek and put under the ban all that he has, and you shall not spare them, and put to death from man to woman, from infant to nursing child, from ox to sheep, from camel to donkey. Then Shaul summoned the people and mustered them in Telaim, two hundred thousand foot soldiers and ten thousand men of Yehuda. And Shaul came to a city of Amalek and lay in wait in the Wadi. And Shaul said to the Canaanites, Go, turn aside, come down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you did show loving commitment to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Mitzrayim. So the Canaanites turned aside from the midst of the Amalekites. And Shaul struck the Amalekites from Hawilah all the way to Shur, which is before Mitzrayim. And he caught Agag, sovereign of the Amalekites, alive, and put under the ban all the people with the edge of the sword. But Shaul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the cattle, and the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not put them under the ban. But all goods despised and worthless they put under the ban. And the word of Yahuwah came to Shemuel, saying, I am grieved that I have set up Shaul as sovereign, for he has turned back from following me, and has not performed my words. And it displeased Shemuel, and he cried to Yahuwah all night. And Shemuel rose early in the morning to meet Shaul, and it was told to Shemuel, saying, Shaul went to Carmel, and see, he set up a monument for himself then turned and passed over and went down to Gilgal. And Shemuel came to Shaul, and Shaul said to him, Blessed are you of Yahuwah! I have performed the word of Yahuwah. But Shemuel said, What then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the cattle which I hear? And Shaul said, They have brought them from Amalek, because the people spared the best of the sheep and the cattle to slaughter to Yahuwah your Elohim, and the rest we have put under the ban. And Shemuel said to Shaul, Wait, and let me declare to you what Yahuwah said to me last night. And he said to him, Speak. And Shemuel said, Though you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Yisrael? And did not Yahuwah anoint you sovereign over Yisrael? And Yahuwah sent you on the way and said, Go, and you shall put under the ban the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. And why did you not obey the voice of Yahuwah, but swooped down on the spoil and did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah? And Shaul said to Shemuel, I did obey the voice of Yahuwah, And I went on the way on which Yahuwah sent me and brought back Agag, sovereign of Amalek, and I put Amalek under the ban. But the people took of the spoil of the sheep and cattle the best of that which should have been put under the ban to slaughter to Yahuwah your Elohim in Gilgal. Then Shemuel said, Does Yahuwah delight in ascending offerings and slaughterings? as in obeying the voice of Yahuwah? Look, to obey is better than a slaughtering. To heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination, and stubbornness is as wickedness and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, he also does reject you as sovereign. And Shaul said to Shemuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the mouth of Yahuwah and your words, 
because I feared the people and listened to their voice. And now please pardon my sin and return with me and let me bow myself to Yahuwah. But Shemuel said to Shaul, I do not return with you, for you have rejected the word of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah does reject you from being sovereign over Israel. And as Shemuel turned around to go away, Shaul took hold of the corner of his robe, and it tore. And Shemuel said to him, Yahuwah has torn the reign of Israel from you today, and has given it to a neighbor of yours better than you. Moreover, the eminence of Israel does not lie nor relent, for he is not a man that he should relent. Then he said, I have sinned, but esteem me now, please, before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me, and I shall bow myself to Yahuwah your Elohim. And Shemuel turned back after Shaul, and Shaul bowed himself to Yahuwah. And Shemuel said, Bring Agag, sovereign of the Amalekites, here to me. So Agag came to him delightedly, and Agag said, Truly, the bitterness of death has turned aside. And Shemuel said, As your sword bereaved women, let your mother be bereaved among women too. Shemuel then hewed Agag to pieces before Yahuwah in Gilgal. And Shemuel went to Ramah, while Shaul went up to his house at Gibeah of Shaul. And Shemuel did not see Shaul again until the day of his death, for Shemuel mourned for Shaul. And Yahuwah was grieved that he had made Shaul to reign over Israel. Chapter 16 And Yahuwah said to Shemuel, How long are you going to mourn for Shaul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Yishai, the Bethlehemite, for I have seen among his sons a sovereign for myself. And Shemuel said, How would I go? When Shaul hears it, he shall kill me. And Yahuwah said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to slaughter to Yahuwah. And you shall invite Yishai to the slaughtering, then let me show you what to do. And you shall anoint for me the one I say to you. And Shemuel did what Yahuwah said, and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Do you come in peace? And he said, In peace I have come to slaughter to Yahuwah. Set yourselves apart, and you shall come with me to the slaughtering. And he sent Yeshai and his sons apart, and invited them to the slaughtering. And it came to be when they came that he saw Eliyah, and thought, The anointed of Yahuwah is indeed before him. But Yahuwah said to Shemuel, Do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for not as a man sees, for man looks at the eyes, but Yahuwah looks at the heart. Then Yishai called Abinadab and made him pass before Shemuel, and he said, Neither has Yahuwah chosen this one. Next, Yeshai made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has Yahuwah chosen this one. And Yeshai made seven of his sons pass before Shemuel. And Shemuel said to Yeshai, Yahuwah has not chosen these. And Shemuel said to Yeshai, Are these all the young men? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, and see, he is tending the sheep. And Shemuel said to Yeshai, Send and bring him, for we do not turn round till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in, and he was ruddy, with bright eyes and handsome. And Yahuwah said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. 
And Shemuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of Yahuwah came upon David from that day and onwards. And Shemuel arose and went to Ramah. And the spirit of Yahuwah turned aside from Shaul, and an evil spirit from Yahuwah troubled him. And the servants of Shaul said to him, Look, now an evil spirit from Elohim is troubling you. Please let our master command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skilled player on the lyre. And it shall be that when the evil spirit from Elohim is upon you, that he shall play with his hand and you be well. And Shaul said to his servants, Please get me a man that plays well and bring him to me. And one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son of Yeshai, the Bethlehemite, who knows how to play, a brave one, and a man of battle, and skilled in words, and a handsome man, and Yahuwah is with him. So Shaul sent messengers to Yeshai and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. And Yeshai took a donkey loaded with bread, and a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them by his son David to Shaul. And David came to Shaul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor-bearer. Shaul therefore sent to Yeshai, saying, Please let David stand before me, for he has found favor in my eyes. And it came to be, whenever the evil spirit from Elohim was upon Shaul, that David would take a lyre, and play it with his hand. Then Shaul would become refreshed and well, and the evil spirit would leave him. Chapter 17 And the Philistines had gathered their armies for battle and came together at Socha, which belongs to Yehuda, and encamped between Socha and Azekah in Ephes Damim, and Shaul and the men of Yisrael gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah and drew up in battle array to meet the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Yisrael stood on a mountain on the other side with the valley between them. Then a champion came out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span and a bronze helmet was on his head, and he was armed with a scaled armor, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of bronze, and bronze shin guards on his legs, and a bronze spear between his shoulders, and the wood of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed six hundred shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him, And he stood and shouted to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servants of Shaul, choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and shall strike me, then we shall be your servants. But if I overcome him and shall strike him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Then the Philistine said, This day I shall reproach the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight together. And Shaul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, and they were broken down and in great fear. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem in Yehuda, whose name was Yishai, and he had eight sons. And in the days of Shaul, the man was old among men. And the three oldest sons of Yishai went. They had gone to follow Shaul to the battle. And the names of his three sons who went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and his second, Abinadab, and the third, Shammah. And David was the youngest, and the three oldest followed Shaul. But David went and returned from Shaul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And for forty days 
the Philistine drew near, morning and evening, and took his stand. Then Yishai said to his son David, Please, take your brothers and ephah of this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp, and take these ten cheeses to the commander of the thousand, and see how your brothers are, and bring back news of them. For Shaul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the sheep with a herdsman, and took and went as Yishai had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight, and they shouted for the battle. And Yisrael and the Philistines drew up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the keeper of the supplies, and ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. And he was speaking with them, and saw the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, and David heard. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, ran from him and were in great fear. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? For he has come up to reproach Israel. And it shall be that the man who strikes him, the sovereign, is going to enrich him with great riches, and give him his daughter, and give his father's house exception in Israel. And David spoke to the men who stood by, saying, What shall be done for the man who strikes this Philistine, and shall take away reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should reproach the armies of the living Elohim? And the people answered him according to this word, saying, This is what is done for the man who strikes him. And Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's displeasure burned against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the evil of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, Now what have I done? Was it not but a word? And he turned around from him toward another and said the same word. And these people answered him a word like the first word. And when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Shaul, and he sent for him. And David said to Shaul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant is going and shall fight with this Philistine. And Shaul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he a man of battle from his youth. Then David said to Shaul, Your servant has been tending sheep for his father, and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it and rescued it from its mouth. And when it rose against me, I took hold of it by its beard and struck it and killed it. Your servant has stricken both lion and bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, seeing he has reproached the armies of the living Elohim. And David said, Yahuwah, who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he does deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Shaul said to David, Go, and Yahuwah be with you. And Shaul dressed David with his garments, and he put a bronze helmet on his head and put a coat of armor on him. And David girded his sword over his garments and began to go. But he had not tried them. Then David said to Shaul, I am not able to go with these, for I have not tried them. So David took them off, and he took his staff in his hand, and chose for himself five smooth stones from the wadi, and put them in a shepherd's bag, in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came, and began drawing near to David, And the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he despised him, for he was a youth and ruddy and of handsome appearance. 
And the Philistines said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his mighty ones. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I give your flesh to the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, whom you have reproached. This day Yahuwah shall deliver you into my hand, and I shall strike you and take your head from you and give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines today to the birds of the heavens and the wild beasts of the earth, so that all the earth know that Elohim is for Israel. And all this assembly know that Yahuwah does not save with sword and spear, for the battle belongs to Yahuwah, and he shall give you into our hands. And it came to be when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine on his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. Thus David was stronger than the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. And there was no sword in the hand of David. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and Yehuda arose and shouted and pursued the Philistine as far as the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistine fell along the way to Sha'arim, even as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the children of Israel turned back from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their camps. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put his weapons in his tent. And when Shaul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As your being lives, O sovereign, I do not know. And the sovereign said, Ask whose son this young man is. And when David returned from the striking of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Shaul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Shaul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David said, The son of your servant, Yishai, the Bethlehemite. Chapter 18 And it came to be, when he had ended speaking to Shaul, that the being of Jonathan was knit to the being of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own being. And Shaul took him that day, and would not let him return to his father's house any more. And Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own being. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and his bow and his girdle. And David went out wherever Shaul sent him. He acted wisely. And Shaul set him over the men of battle. And it was right in the eyes of all the people and also in the eyes of Shaul's servants. And it came to be as they came in, as David was returning from striking the Philistines, that the women came out from all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet Shaul the sovereign with tambourines, with joy and with musical instruments. And the women sang as they danced and said, Shaul struck his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Shaul was very wroth, and this matter was evil in his eyes. And he said, To David they give Tens of thousands, and to me they have given thousands? So what more for him except the rain? And from that day on, Shaul eyed David. 
And it came to be on the next day that an evil spirit from Elohim came upon Shaul, and he prophesied inside the house. While David was playing the lyre with his hand as usual, and the spear was in the hand of Shaul. Then Shaul hurled the spear, for he said, Let me strike twice David, even to the wall. But twice David withdrew from his presence, and Shaul was afraid of David, because Yahuwah was with him. But from Shaul he had turned away. Shaul therefore removed from him his presence and made him his commander over a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. And David was acting wisely in all his ways, and Yahuwah was with him. And Shaul saw that he was acting very wisely and was afraid of him. But all Yisrael and Yahudah loved David as he went out and came in before them. And Shaul said to David, See my older daughter Merab, I give her to you as a wife. Only be brave for me and fight the battles of Yahuwah. For Shaul thought, Let not my hand be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. And David said to Shaul, Who am I? And what is my life or my father's clan in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the sovereign? And it came to be at the time when Merab, Shaul's daughter, should have been given to David, that she was given to Adriel, the Maholathite, as a wife. And Michal, Shaul's daughter, loved David. And they told Shaul, and the matter was right in his eyes. And Shaul said, Let me give her to him, and let her be a snare to him, and the hand of the Philistine be against him. So Shaul said to David a second time, Become my son-in-law today. And Shaul commanded his servants, Speak to David gently, and say, See, the sovereign has delighted in you, and all his servants have loved you, and now be the sovereign's son-in-law. And the servants of Shaul spoke these words in the hearing of David, and David said, Does it seem to you a small matter to be a sovereign son-in-law? seeing I am a poor man and lightly esteemed. And the servants of Shaul told him, saying, David has spoken according to these words. And Shaul said, Say to David, The sovereign has no delight in any payment for the bride but one hundred foreskins of the Philistines to be avenged on the sovereign's enemies. But Shaul intended to have David fall by the hand of the Philistines. And his servants declared these words to David, and it pleased David well to become the sovereign son-in-law, and the days had not expired. And David arose and went, he and his men, and struck two hundred men of the Philistines. And David brought their foreskins, and they set them before the sovereign to become the sovereign son-in-law. And Shaul gave him Michal, his daughter, as a wife. And Shaul saw and knew that Yahuwah was with David. And Michal, daughter of Shaul, did love him. So then Shaul was still more afraid of David. And Shaul came to be an enemy of David all the days. And the princes of the Philistines went out to fight. And it came to be whenever they went out that David acted more wisely than all the servants of Shaul, so that his name came to be very precious. Chapter 19 And Shaul spoke to Jonathan his son and to all his servants to put David to death. But Jonathan, Shaul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan declared to David, saying, My father Shaul seeks to put you to death. And now please be on your guard until morning and dwell in secrecy and hide. And I myself shall go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and speak with my father about you, and shall see and shall let you know. And Jonathan spoke well of David to Shaul, his father, and said to him, Let not the sovereign sin against his servant against David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his works have been very good toward you. For he took his life in his hands and struck the Philistine, and Yahuwah wrought a great deliverance for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then do you sin against innocent blood to put David to death without cause? 
And Shaul listened to the voice of Jonathan. And Shaul swore, As Yahuwah lives, he does not die. Jonathan then called David, and Jonathan told him all these words. So Jonathan brought David to Shaul, and he was in his presence as before. And there was fighting again. And David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them a great smiting, and they fled before him. And an evil spirit from Yahuwah came upon Shaul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. And David was playing the lyre with his hand. And Shaul sought to strike the spear through David and into the wall, but he slipped away from the presence of Shaul. So he struck the spear into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. And Shaul sent messengers to David's house to watch him and to put him to death in the morning. And Michal, David's wife, informed him, saying, If you do not save your life tonight, tomorrow you are put to death. So Michal let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michal took the household idol and laid it in the bed, and put a cover of goat's hair for his head, and covered it with a garment. And when Shaul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Shaul sent the messengers back to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed to put him to death. And the messengers came in and saw the household idol in the bed with a cover of goat's hair for his head. Shaul then said to Michal, Why have you deceived me like this and sent my enemy away so that he escaped? And Michal answered Shaul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I put you to death? Now David fled and escaped and went to Shemuel at Ramah and told him all that Shaul had done to him. And he and Shemuel went and dwelt in Nawith. And it was reported to Shaul, saying, See, David is in Nawith in Ramah. And Shaul sent messengers to take David. And they saw the assembly of the prophets prophesying and Shemuel standing as leader over them. And the spirit of Elohim came upon the messengers of Shaul, and they also prophesied. And when Shaul was told, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. So Shaul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then he himself went to Ramah and came to that great well that is at Seku. And he asked and said, Where are Shemuel and David? And one said, They're in Nawith in Ramah. So he went there to Nawith in Ramah, and the spirit of Elohim was upon him too. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Nawith in Ramah. And he also stripped off his garments and prophesied before Shemuel and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Therefore they say, Is Shaul also among the prophets? Chapter 20 And David fled from Nawith in Ramah, and went and said to Jonathan, What have I done? What is my crookedness and what is my sin before your father that he seeks my life? And Jonathan said to it, Far be it, you are not going to die? See, my father does no big matter nor small matter without disclosing it to me. And why should my father hide this matter from me? It is not so. But David swore again and said, Your father knows well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he says, Do not let Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, there is but a step between me and death. And Jonathan said to David, Whatever your desire is, I do it for you. And David said to Jonathan, See, tomorrow is the new moon, and I ought to sit with the sovereign to eat, but let me go and I shall hide in the field until the third day at evening. If your father misses me at all, then you shall say, David earnestly asked my permission to run over to Bethlehem, his city, for a yearly slaughtering is made there for all the clan. If he says thus, it is well, your servant is safe. But if he is very displeased, then know that he is resolved to do evil. 
and you shall show loving commitment to your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of Yahuwah with you. And if there is crookedness in me, put me to death yourself, for why should you bring me to your father? And Jonathan said, Far be it from you! For if I knew with certainty that my father has resolved that evil is to come upon you, then would I not make it known to you? And David said to Jonathan, Who would make it known to me? Or what if your father answers you sharply? And Jonathan said to David, Come, and let us go out into the field. They both went out into the field, and Jonathan said to David, Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael be witness, when I search out my father sometime tomorrow or the third day and see if there is good toward David, and I do not send to you or disclose it to you. So let Yahuwah do so and much more to Jonathan, and if it pleases my father to do you evil, then I shall disclose it to you and send you away, and you shall go in peace. And Yahuwah be with you as he has been with my father." But show me the loving commitment of Yahuwah, not only while I still live, so that I do not die. And do not cut off your loving commitment from my house forever. No, not when Yahuwah has cut off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. And Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Yahuwah shall require it at the hand of the enemies of David. And Jonathan again made David swear, because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own being. So Jonathan said to him, Tomorrow is the new moon, and you shall be missed, because your seat shall be empty. And on the third day go down quickly, and you shall come to the place where you hid on the day of the deed, and shall remain by the stone at Zel. And let me shoot three arrows to the side of it, as though shooting at a target. And see, I shall send the youth, saying, Go find the arrows. If I expressly say to the youth, Look, the arrows are on this side of you. Get them and come. Then, as Yahuwah lives, there is safety for you and no concern. But if I say thus to the youth, Look, the arrows are beyond you. Go your way, for Yahuwah has sent you away. And as for the word which you and I have spoken of, see, Yahuwah is between you and me forever. And David hid in the field. And when the new moon came, the sovereign sat down by the food to eat. And the sovereign sat on his seat, as at other times, on a seat by the wall, with Jonathan standing and Abner sitting by Shaul's side. But the place of David was empty. But Shaul spoke not a word that day, for he thought, It is an accident. He is not clean, for he has not been cleansed. And it came to be on the next day, the second day of the new moon, that David's place was empty. And Shaul said to Jonathan his son, Why has the son of Yeshai not come to eat, either yesterday or today? And Jonathan answered Shaul, David earnestly asked my permission to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Please let me go, for our clan has a slaughtering in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. And now, if I found favor in your eyes, please let me get away and see my brothers. That is why he has not come to the sovereign's table. Then the displeasure of Shaul burned against Jonathan. And he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Yeshai to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Yeshi lives on the earth, you shall not be established, you and your reign. And now send and bring him to me, for he is a son of death. And Jonathan answered Shaul, his father, and said, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? At that, Shaul hurled a spear at him to smite him. Then Jonathan knew that his father had resolved to put David to death. And Jonathan rose up from the table in the heat of displeasure and ate no food the second day of the new moon, for he was grieved for David, because his father put him to shame. And it came to be in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David, and a small youth was with him. 
And he said to the youth, Now run, find the arrows which I shoot. As the youth ran, he shot an arrow behind him. And when the youth came to the place where the arrow was which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan called out after the youth and said, Is not the arrow beyond you? And Jonathan shouted after the youth, Make haste, hurry, do not stand still. And Jonathan's youth picked up the arrows and came to his master. But the youth knew not a speck. Only Jonathan and David knew of the matter. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the youth and said to him, Go, take them to the city. And as soon as the youth had gone, David rose up from the south side and fell on his face to the ground and bowed down three times. And they kissed one another and they wept together. But David more so. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, since we have both sworn in the name of Yahuwah, saying, Yahuwah is between you and me, between your seed and my seed forever. Then he arose and left, and Jonathan went into the city. Chapter 21 And David came to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest, And Ahimelech trembled when he met David and asked him, Why are you alone and no one is with you? And David said to Ahimelech the priest, The sovereign has commanded me a word and said to me, Let no one know whatever the word about which I send you, which I have commanded you. And I have directed my young men to such and such a place. And now, what do you have on hand? Give five loaves into my hand, or whatever is found. And the priest answered David and said, There is no ordinary bread on hand, but there is set apart bread, provided the young men have kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest and said to him, Truly, women have been kept from us for about three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are set apart. And it is an ordinary mission, and also... It was set apart in the vessel today. Then the priest gave him set apart bread, for there was no bread there except the showbread which had been taken from before Yahuwah in order to put hot bread in on the day it is taken away. Now one of the servants of Shaul was there that day, detained before Yahuwah, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Shaul, And David said to Ahimelech, Is there not here on hand a spear or a sword? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the matter of the sovereign was urgent. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you struck in the valley of Elah. See, it is wrapped in a garment behind the shoulder garment. If you would take it, take it. For there is none other except this one here. And David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. And David rose and fled that day from before Shaul and went to Achish, the sovereign of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the sovereign of the land? Did they not sing of him to each other in dances, saying, Shaul struck his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And David took these words to heart, and was very much afraid of Achish, the sovereign of Gath, and changed his behavior before them, and feigned madness in their hands, and scratched on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva run down on his beard. Then Achish said to his servants, Look, You see the man is acting like a madman. Why do you bring him to me? Am I short of madmen that you have brought this one to act as a madman near me? Should this one come into my house? Chapter 22 And David went from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And his brothers and all his father's house heard it and went down to him there. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, 
and everyone bitter in being gathered to him, so he became head over them. And there were about four hundred men with him. And David went from there to Mitzpah of Moab and said to the sovereign of Moab, Please, let my father and mother come here with you till I know what Elohim does for me. And he left them with the sovereign of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the time that David was in the stronghold. And the prophet Gad said to David, Do not remain in the stronghold. Leave and go to the land of Yehuda. So David left there and went into the Hereth woods. And Shaul heard that David and the men who were with him had been discovered while Shaul was in Giba, sitting under a tamarisk tree in Ramah with his spear in his hand and all his servants standing about him. And Shaul said to his servants, who were standing around him, Hear now, you Benjamites! Does the son of Yishai give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds? For all of you have conspired against me, and there is no one who reveals to me that my son has made a covenant with the son of Yishai. And there is not one of you who is grieved for me or reveals to me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as it is this day. And Doeg the Edomite, who was set over the servants of Shaul, answered and said, I saw the son of Yeshai going to Nob, to Ahimelech, son of Ahitab. And he inquired of Yahuwah for him, gave him food, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. And the sovereign sent someone to call Ahimelech the priest, son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests who were in Nob, and they all came to the sovereign. And Shaul said, Hear now, son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my master. And Shaul said to him, Why have you conspired against me? you and the son of Yeshai, by giving him bread and a sword and have inquired of Elohim for him to rise against me, to lie in wait as it is this day. And Ahimelech answered the sovereign and said, And who among all your servants is so trustworthy as David, who is the sovereign son-in-law, and has turned aside to your counsel and is esteemed in your house? Have I today begun to inquire of Elohim for him? Far be it from me, let not the sovereign lay a case against his servant or against any in the house of my father, for your servant knew not at all of this, little or much. And the sovereign said, You shall certainly die, Ahimelech, you and all your father's house. And the sovereign then said to the guards who stood about him, Turn and put the priests of Yahuwah to death because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not reveal it to me. But the servants of the sovereign would not lift their hands to come against the priests of Yahuwah. And the sovereign said to Doeg, You turn and come against the priests. So Doeg the Edomite turned and came against the priests and put to death on that day eighty-five men who wore a linen shoulder garment. And he struck Nob, the city of the priests, with the edge of the sword, from men even to women, from children even to nursing infants, and oxen and donkeys and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, son of Ahitub, named Ebiathar, escaped and fled after David. Then Ebiathar reported to David that Shaul had killed the priests of Yahuwah. And David said to Abiathar, I knew that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would certainly inform Shaul, I am accountable for all the lives of your father's house. Remain with me. Do not fear. For he who seeks my life seeks your life. But with me, you are safe. Chapter 23 And they informed David, saying, See, the Philistines are fighting against Kiela. 
and they are plundering the threshing floors. So David inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Shall I go and strike these Philistines? And Yahuwah said to David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. And David's men said to him, See, we here in Yehuda are afraid. How much more then if we go to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines? And David inquired of Yahuwah once again. And David answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I am giving the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought with the Philistines. And he led away their livestock and struck them, a great smiting. Thus David saved the inhabitants of Keilah. And it came to be when Abiathar, son of Ahimelech, fled to David at Keilah, that he went down with the shoulder garment in his hand. And Shaul was informed that David had gone to Keilah. Then Shaul said, Elohim has estranged him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And Shaul summoned all the people to battle, to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Shaul was plotting evil against him and said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the shoulder garment here. And David said, O Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, your servant has heard for certain that Shaul seeks to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Are the landowners of Keilah going to surrender me into his hand? Is Shaul coming down as your servant has heard? O Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I pray, let your servant know. And Yahuwah said, He is coming down. And David said, Are the landowners of Keilah going to surrender me and my men into the hand of Shaul? And Yahuwah said, They are going to surrender you. Then David and his men, about six hundred, arose and left Keilah and went wherever they could go. And Shaul was informed that David had escaped from Keilah, and he ceased to go out. And David remained in the wilderness, in strongholds, and remained in the hill country, in the wilderness of Ziph. And Shaul sought him every day, but Elohim did not give him into his hand. And David saw that Shaul had come out to seek his life while David was in the wilderness of Ziph at Horesh. And Jonathan, Shaul's son, arose and went to David at Horesh and strengthened his hand in Elohim and said to him, Do not fear, for the hand of Shaul my father is not going to find you, and you are to reign over Israel, and I am to be next to you. Even my father Shaul knows that. And they made a covenant before Yahuwah. And David remained at Horesh, while Jonathan went to his own house. And the Ziphites came up to Shaul at Giba, saying, Is David not hiding with us in strongholds? Horesh, in the hill of Hakilah, which is on the south of the wasteland. And now, O sovereign, by all the desire of your being, Come down, come down, and our part is to surrender him into the sovereign's hand. And Shaul said, Blessed are you of Yahuwah, for you have sympathy with me. Please go, prepare yet further, and find out and see the place where his hideout is. Who has seen him there, for I am told that he is very cunning. So look and learn all about the hiding places where he hides, and you shall come back to me with certainty. Then I shall go with you, and it shall be if he is in the land that I shall search for him throughout all the clans of Yahuda. And they rose up and went to Ziph before Shaul, while David and his men were in the wilderness of Ma'on, in the desert plain on the south of the wasteland. And Shaul and his men went to seek him, And they informed David, so he went down to the rock and remained in the wilderness of Ma'on. And when Shaul heard this, he pursued David in the wilderness of Ma'on. And Shaul went on one side of the mountain, and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. And David was hurrying to get away from Shaul, for Shaul and his men were surrounding David 
and his men to take them. Then a messenger came to Shaul, saying, Hurry and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. So Shaul turned back from pursuing David and went against the Philistines. Therefore they called that place Selah Hamalekoth. And David went up from there and remained in the strongholds at Engedi. Chapter 24 And it came to be, when Shaul had returned from pursuing the Philistines, that it was reported to him, saying, See, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. So Shaul took three thousand chosen men from all Israel and went to seek David and his men on the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheepfolds on the way, and there was a cave. And Shaul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said to him, See the day of which Yahuwah said to you, See, I am giving your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. And David arose and gently cut off a corner of Shaul's robe. And it came to be afterward that the heart of David struck him because he had cut the corner of Shaul's robe. So he said to his men, Far be it from me, by Yahuwah, that I should do this matter to my master, anointed of Yahuwah, to stretch out my hand against him, for he is the anointed of Yahuwah. And David dispersed his servants with words, and did not allow them to rise against Shaul, And Shaul rose up from the cave and went on his way. And afterward, David arose and went out of the cave and called out to Shaul, saying, My master, the sovereign. And when Shaul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the earth and did obeisance. And David said to Shaul, Why do you listen to the words of men who say, See, David seeks to do you evil? See, this day your eyes have seen that Yahuwah gave you today into my hand in the cave, and one said to kill you. But my eye pardoned you, and I said, I do not stretch out my hand against my master, for he is the anointed of Yahuwah. And my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. No, and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand. And I have not sinned against you, while you are hunting my life to take it. Let Yahuwah judge between you and me, and let Yahuwah avenge me on you. But my hand is not against you. As the proverb of the ancient says, wrong comes from the wrongdoer. But my hand is not against you. After whom has the sovereign of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A flea? And Yahuwah shall be judge and rightly rule between you and me and see and plead my case and rightly rule me out of your hand. And it came to be when David had ended speaking these words to Shaul that Shaul said, Is this your voice, my son, David? So Shaul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have rewarded me with good, whereas I have rewarded you with evil. And you have shown today how you have done good to me, for when Yahuwah surrendered me into your hand, you did not kill me. For if a man finds his enemy, shall he let him get away safely? And let Yahuwah reward you with good for what you have done to me today. And now look, I know that you shall certainly reign and that the reign of Israel shall be established in your hand. And now swear to me by Yahuwah that you do not cut off my seed after me nor destroy my name from my father's house. Then David swore to Shaul. Then Shaul went home and David and his men went up to the stronghold. Chapter 25 And Shemuel died, and all Israel gathered and mourned for him and buried him at his home in Ramah. 
And David arose and went down into the wilderness of Paran. Now there was a man in Moan, and his work was in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had three thousand sheep and a thousand goats. And he came to be shearing his sheep in Carmel. And the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful. But the man was hard and evil in his doing, and he was of Caleb. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. And David sent ten young men. And David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and you shall come to Nabal, and shall greet him in my name. And say this, Long life and peace to you, and peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. And now I have heard that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us. We did not put them to shame, and not a speck of theirs was missing all the days they were in Carmel. Ask your young men and let them inform you. So let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a good day. Please give whatever comes to your hand to your servants and to your son David. And the young men of David came and spoke to Nabal according to all these words in the name of David and waited. But Nabal answered the servants of David and said, Who is David and who is the son of Yeshai? The servants who are running away from their masters have become many nowadays. Shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? And the young men of David turned around on their way and went back and came and reported to him all these words. And David said to his men, Each one gird on his sword. So they each girded on his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And about four hundred men went with David and two hundred remained with the baggage. And one of the young men informed Abigail, the wife of Nabal, saying, See, David has sent messengers from the wilderness to greet our master, but he scoffed at them. But the men were very good to us, and did not put us to shame, nor did we miss any item all the days we accompanied them when we were in the fields. They were a wall to us, both by night and day. All the days we were with them, tending the sheep. And now know and see what you should do, for evil has been resolved against our master and against all his household, and he is too much of a son of Belial to speak to. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep made ready, five measures of roasted grain and one hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and loaded them on donkeys. And she said to her servants, Pass over before me, see, I am coming after you. But she did not inform her husband, Nabal. And it came to be as she rode on the donkey, that she went down under the cover of the hill, and there were David and his men coming down toward her, and she met them. And David had said, Only in vain have I protected all that this one has in the wilderness, so that not a speck was missing of all that belongs to him, and he has repaid me evil for good. Let Elohim do so, and more also to the enemies of David, if I leave one male of all who belong to him by morning light. And Abigail saw David, And she hastened to come down from her donkey and fell on her face before David and bowed down to the ground and fell at his feet and said, On me, my master, let this crookedness be on me. And please let your female servant speak in your ears and hear the words of your female servant. Please let not my master regard this man of Belial, Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your female servant, did not see the young men of my master whom you sent. And now, my master, as Yahuwah lives and as your being lives, since Yahuwah has withheld you from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now then let your enemies be as Nabal, even those seeking evil against my master." 
And now this present which your female servant has brought to my master, let it be given to the young men who follow my master. Please forgive the transgression of your female servant, for Yahuwah is certainly making a steadfast house for my master. Because my master fights the battles of Yahuwah, and evil is not found in you all your days. And if a man rises to pursue you and seek your life, and the life of my master has been bound in the bundle of the living with Yahuwah your Elohim, then the lives of your enemies he shall sling out as from the pocket of a sling. And it shall be when Yahuwah has done for my master according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has commanded you to be ruler over Israel. Do not let this be a staggering and stumbling of heart to my master, that you have shed blood without cause, or that my master has saved himself. And when Yahuwah has done good to my master, then remember your female servant. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, who sent you to meet me today, and blessed is your good taste. And blessed are you because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. Nevertheless, as Yahuwah Elohim of Israel lives, who has kept me back from doing evil to you, if you had not hurried and come to meet me, not a male would have been left to Nabal by break of day for certain. And David received from her hand what she had brought him and said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have listened to your voice and have accepted your face. And Abigail went to Nabal, and see, he was at a feast in his house, like the feast of a sovereign. And Nabal's heart was glad within him, and he was exceedingly drunk. So she told him not a word, little or much, until morning light. And it came to be in the morning when the wine had gone from Nabal, and his wife had told him these matters, that his heart died within him and he became like a stone. And it came to be in about ten days that Yahuwah smote Nabal, and he died. And David heard that Nabal was dead, and he said, Blessed be Yahuwah, who has pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of Nabal, and has kept his servant from evil. For Yahuwah has returned the evil of Nabal on his own head. And David sent and spoke to Abigail, to take her as his wife. And when the servants of David had come to Abigail at Carmel, they spoke to her, saying, David sent us to you to ask you to become his wife. And she arose, bowed her face to the earth, and said, Here is your female servant, a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my master. And Abigail hurried and rose, and rode on a donkey with five of her female attendants. And she followed the messengers of David and became his wife. David had also taken Ahinoam of Yisrael, and so both of them were his wives. But Shaul had given Michal, his daughter, David's wife, to Palti, son of Laish, who was from Galim. Chapter 26 And the Ziphites came to Shaul at Geba, saying, Is not David hiding himself in the hill of Hakelah, overlooking the wasteland? And Shaul rose up and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, and with him three thousand chosen men of Israel, to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Shaul encamped in the hill of Hakelah, overlooking the wasteland by the way, while David was dwelling in the wilderness. And he saw that Shaul came after him into the wilderness. And David sent out spies and learned that Shaul had indeed come. And David rose up and came to the place where Shaul had encamped. And David saw the place where Shaul lay, and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of his army. And Shaul was lying within the enclosure, with the people encamped all around him. And David spoke up and said to Ahimelech the Hittite, and to Abishai, son of Zeruiah, brother of Joab, saying, Who does go down with me to Shaul in the camp? And Abishai said, I, I go down with you. And David and Abishai came to the people by night, 
and saw Shaul lying asleep within the camp, with his spear stuck in the ground by his head, and Abner and the people lay all around him. And Abishai said to David, Elohim has surrendered your enemy into your hand this day. And now please, let me strike him at once with the spear right into the earth and not a second time. But David said to Abishai, Do not destroy him, for who shall stretch out his hand against the anointed of Yahuwah and be guiltless? David also said, As Yahuwah lives, except Yahuwah does smite him, or his day come that he shall die, or he shall go out to battle and perish, far be it from me by Yahuwah that I stretch out my hand against the anointed of Yahuwah. And now please take the spear and the jug of water that are by his head and let us go. So David took the spear and the jug of water by Shaul's head, and they went away. And no man saw it, or knew it, or awoke, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from Yahuwah had fallen on them. And David passed over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill far away, a great distance being between them. And David called out to the people and to Abner, son of Ner, saying, Do you not answer, Abner? And Abner answered and said, Who are you, calling out to the sovereign? And David said to Abner, Are you not a man? And who is like you in Israel? Why then have you not guarded your master, the sovereign? For one of the people came in to destroy your master, the sovereign. What you have done is not good. As Yahuwah lives, you are worthy to die because you have not guarded your master, the anointed of Yahuwah. And now see where the sovereign spear is and the jug of water that was by his head. And Shaul recognized David's voice and said, Is that your voice, my son, David? And David said, It is my voice, my master, O sovereign. And he said, Why is this that my master is pursuing a servant? For what have I done? And what evil is in my hand? And now please let my master the sovereign hear the words of his servant. If Yahuwah has moved you against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, then they are cursed before Yahuwah. For they have driven me out today that I should not join myself to the inheritance of Yahuwah, saying, Go serve other mighty ones. And now do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of Yahuwah, For the sovereign of Israel has come out to seek a flea, as one hunts a partridge in the mountains. And Shaul said, I have sinned. Come back, my son David, for no more am I going to do evil to you, because my life was precious in your eyes today. See, I have acted foolishly and have greatly strayed. And David answered and said, See the sovereign spear. And let one of the young men come over and get it. And let Yahuwah reward every man for his righteousness and his trustworthiness. For this day Yahuwah gave you into my hand. But I would not stretch out my hand against the anointed of Yahuwah. And see, as your life has been valued in my eyes today, so let my life be valued in the eyes of Yahuwah. And let him deliver me out of all distresses. And Shaul said to David, Blessed are you, my son David achieving much and indeed prevailing. Then David went on his way, and Shaul returned to his place. Chapter 27 And David said in his heart, Now I shall perish by the hand of Shaul. Some day there is not better for me than to escape to the land of the Philistines. Then Shaul shall give up searching for me any longer in any part of Israel, and I shall escape out of his hand. So David rose up and passed over with the six hundred men who were with him to Achish, son of Maok, sovereign of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, each man with his household, David with his two wives, Ahinoam the Israelitess, and Abigail the Carmelitess, Nabal's widow, And it was reported to Shaul that David had fled to Gath, so he sought him no more. And David said to Achish, If I now have found favor in your eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country to dwell there. 
for why should your servant dwell in the royal city with you? And Achish gave him Ziglag that day. That is why Ziglag has belonged to the sovereigns of Yehuda to this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines came to be a year and four new moons. And David and his men went up and raided the Gershaites and the Gerzites and the Amalekites. For those nations were the inhabitants of the land from of old, as you go to Shur, even as far as the land of Mitzrayim. And when David had stricken the land, he left neither man nor woman alive, but took away sheep and cattle and donkeys and camels and garments and returned and came to Achish. And Achish would say, Where have you made a raid today? And David would say, Against the south of Yehuda, or against the south of the Yerahamalites, or against the south of the Canaanites. David did not keep alive man nor woman to bring news to Gath, saying, Thus they inform against us, saying, Thus David did. And this was his practice all the days that he dwelt in the country of the Philistines. And Achish trusted David, saying to himself, He has indeed made himself a stench to his people in Israel, and has become my servant forever. Chapter 28 And it came to be in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, to fight with Israel. And Achish said to David, You know, of course, that you are to go out with me in the army, you and your men. And David said to Achish, Very well, you shall know what your servant should do. And Achish said to David, Very well, I make you one of my chief guardians forever. And Shemuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, in his own city. And Shaul had put away the mediums and the spiritists from the land. And the Philistines were gathered and came and encamped at Shunem. And Shaul gathered all Yisrael, and they encamped at Gilboa. And when Shaul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. And Shaul inquired of Yahuwah, but Yahuwah did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. Shaul then said to his servants, Find me a woman who is a medium, to go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Look, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. And Shaul disguised himself and put on other garments and went, he and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, Please divine for me and bring up for me the one I shall name. But the woman said, Look, you know that Shaul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the spiritists from the land. Why then do you lay a snare for my life to put me to death? And Shaul swore to her by Yahuwah, saying, As Yahuwah lives, no punishment comes upon you for this matter. And the woman said, Whom do I bring up for you? So he said, Bring up Shemuel for me. And when the woman saw Shemuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Shaul, saying, Why have you deceived me? You yourself are Shaul. And the sovereign said to her, Do not be afraid. What did you see? And the woman said to Shaul, I saw a spirit coming up out of the earth. And he said to her, What is his form? And she said, An old man is coming up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Shaul knew that it was Shemuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. And Shemuel said to Shaul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Shaul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines are fighting against me, and Elohim has turned aside from me and does not answer me any more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. So I have called you to reveal to me what I should do. Then Shemuel said, And why do you ask me, seeing Yahuwah has turned aside from you and has become your enemy? And Yahuwah has done for himself as he spoke by me. For Yahuwah has torn the rain out of your hand and given it to your neighbor David, because you did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, nor execute his burning wrath upon Amalek. Therefore Yahuwah has done this matter to you today. 
Further, Yahuwah also gives Israel with you into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow, you and your sons are with me. Yahuwah also gives the army of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. And immediately, Shaul fell on the ground, his complete length, and greatly feared because of the words of Shemuel. And there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no food all day or all night. And the woman came to Shaul and saw that he had been greatly disturbed and said to him, See, your female servant has obeyed your voice. And I have put my life in my hands and have listened to the words which you spoke to me. And now please listen to the voice of your female servant too. And let me set a piece of bread before you and eat so that you have strength when you go on your way. But he refused and said, I am not going to eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their voice. So he rose from the ground and sat on the bed. And the woman had a fatted calf in the house, and she quickly slaughtered it and took flour and kneaded it and baked unleavened bread from it. And she brought it before Shaul and his servants, and they ate and rose up and went away that night. Chapter 29 And the Philistines gathered all their armies at Aphek, while Israel encamped by a fountain which is in Yisrael. And the princes of the Philistines were passing on by hundreds and by thousands, and David and his men were passing on in the rear with Achish. And the princes of the Philistines said, Who are these Hebrews? And Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, Is this not David, the servant of Shaul, sovereign of Israel, who has been with me these days or these years? And to this day I have found no evil in him since he came over. But the princes of the Philistines were wroth with him. And the princes of the Philistines said to him, Send the man back. Let him return to the place which you have appointed for him, and do not let him go down with us to battle, lest in the battle he become our adversary. For with what could he appease his master, if not with the heads of these men? Is this not David, of whom they sang to each other in the dances, saying, Shaul struck his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And Achish called David and said to him, As Yahuwah lives, you have been straight, and you're going out, and you're coming in with me, and the army is good in my eyes. For to this day I have not found evil in you since the day of your coming to me. But in the eyes of the princes you are not good. And now return and go in peace, and do no evil in the eyes of the princes of the Philistines. And David said to Achish, But what have I done? And to this day what have you found in your servant as long as I have been with you that I should not go and fight against the enemies of my master, the sovereign? But Achish answered and said to David, I know that you are as good in my eyes as a messenger of Elohim. But the princes of the Philistines have said, Let him not go up with us to the battle. And now rise early in the morning with your master's servants who have come with you. And as soon as you are up early in the morning and have light, then go. And David and his men rose up early to go in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. And the Philistines went up To Yisrael. Chapter 30 And it came to be when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and struck Ziglag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but they led them away and went their way. And David and his men came to the city and saw it burn with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. And David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam the Israelitess, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite had been taken captive. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the being of all the people was grieved, each one for his sons and his daughters. 
But David strengthened himself in Yahuwah, his Elohim. And David said to Abiathar the priest, son of Ahimelech, Please bring the shoulder garment here to me. So Abiathar brought the shoulder garment to David. And David inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Do I pursue this band? Do I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall certainly overtake them and certainly rescue. So David went, he and six hundred men who were with him, and came to the Wadi Besor, where a halt was made by those who were left behind. While David pursued he and four hundred men, for two hundred halted, who were too faint to pass over the Wadi Besor. And they found a man in the field, a Mitzrite, and took him to David. And they gave him bread, and he ate, and let him drink water and gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had not eaten bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Mitzrayim, servant of an Amalekite, and my master left me behind, for I had been sick three days. We attacked the south of the Carathites, and against that which belongs to Yehuda, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, Could you bring me down to this marauding band? And he said, Swear to me by Elohim that you neither kill me nor surrender me into the hands of my master. Then I bring you down to this marauding band. And he brought him down and saw they were spread out over the land, eating and drinking and celebrating because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Yehudah. And David struck them from twilight until the evening of the next day, and none of them escaped, except four hundred young men who rode on camels and fled. And David rescued all that the Amalekites had taken, and David also rescued his two wives. And there was none missing to them, whether small or great, whether sons or daughters or spoil or whatever they had taken from them. David recovered all. Besides, David captured all the flocks and herds they had driven before those livestock. And they said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the two hundred men who were too faint to follow David who had also been left at the Wadi Besor. And they went out to meet David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near the people, he greeted them. And all the evil and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, Because they did not go with us, we do not give them any of the spoil that we have rescued, except for every man's wife and children, and let them take them and go. But David said, My brothers, do not do so with what Yahuwah has given us. Who has protected us and gave into our hand the band that came against us? And who would listen to you in this matter? For as his portion is who goes down to the battle, so is his portion who remains with the baggage. They share alike. And it came to be from that day forward, He appointed it for a law and a right ruling for Yisrael to this day. When David came to Ziklag, he sent some of the spoil to the elders of Yehuda, to his friends, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of Yahuwah. To those in Bethel, and to those in Ramoth of the south, and to those in Yatir, and to those in Aror, and to those in Tzimphmoth, and to those in Eshtemoah and to those in Rakal, and to those in the cities of the Ohermalites, and to those in the cities of the Canaanites, to those in Horma, and to those in Korashan, and to those in Athak, and to those in Hebron, and to all the places where David had gone up and down, he and his men. Chapter 31 And the Philistines were fighting against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard after Shaul and his sons. And the Philistines struck Jonathan 
and Abinadab, and Malkishua, sons of Shaul. And the battle went hard against Shaul, and the archers hit him, so that he was severely wounded by the archers. And Shaul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword, and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised men come and thrust me through and roll themselves on me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was greatly afraid. So Shaul took the sword and fell on it. And when his armor bearer saw that Shaul was dead, he also fell on his sword and died with him. Thus Shaul died, and three of his sons and his armor bearer, also all his men together on that day. And they saw the men of Israel who were beyond the valley and those who were beyond the Yarden, that the men of Israel had fled and that Shaul and his sons were dead. So they forsook the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And the next day it came to be when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Shaul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent word throughout the land of the Philistines to announce it in the house of their idols and to the people. And they placed his armor in the house of Ashtaroth, and they fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. And the inhabitants of Yabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Shaul, and all the brave men arose and went all night and took the body of Shaul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan. And they came to Yabesh and burned them there. And they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Yabesh and fasted for seven days. The second book of Samuel, Shemuel Bet, narrated by Nathan Reynolds. And it came to be, after the death of Shaul, when David had returned from striking the Amalekites, that David remained two days in Ziglag. And it came to be on the third day that, see, a man came out of the camp from Shaul with his garments torn and dust on his head. And it came to be when he came to David that he fell to the ground and did obeisance. And David said to him, From where do you come? And he said, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. And David said to him, What was the matter? Please inform me. And he said, The people have fled from the battle, and also many of the people have fallen and are dead, and Shaul and Jonathan his son are dead too. And David said to the young man who informed him, How do you know that Shaul and Jonathan his son are dead? And the young man informed him, said, By chance I was on Mount Gilboa and saw Shaul leaning on his spear, and see the chariots and the horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked back behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered him, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me, Please stand over me and put me to death, for agony has seized me, but my life is still in me. So I stood behind him and put him to death, for I knew he would not live after he had fallen. And I took the diadem that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my master. And David took hold of his garments and tore them, and also all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Shaul and for Jonathan his son and for all the people of Yahuwah and for the house of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. Then David asked the young man who informed him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of a sojourner, the Malachite. And David said to him, How was it you were not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy the anointed of Yahuwah? And David called one of the young men and said, Draw near 
and fall on him. And he struck him so that he died. And David said to him, Your mouth is on your own head, for your own mouth has witnessed against you, saying, I myself have put to death the anointed of Yahuwah. Then David lamented with this lamentation over Shaul and over Jonathan his son. And he ordered the bow to be taught to the children of Yahuda. See, it is written in the book of Yashar. The splendor of Yisrael is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Declare it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Let the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised exult. Mountains of Gilboa, no dew or rain be upon you, nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty lay rejected, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Shaul did not return empty. Shaul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep over Shaul, who wrapped you in scarlet with finery, who decked your robes with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wondrous, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of battle perish. Chapter 2 And it came to be afterwards that David inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Do I go up to any of the cities of Yahuda? And Yahuwah said to him, Go up. And David said, Where should I go up? And he said, To Hebron. And David went up there, as well as his two wives, Ahinoam the Israelitess, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, each man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. And the men of Yehuda came and anointed David sovereign over the house of Yehuda there. They also reported to David, saying, The men of Yabesh Gilead are they who buried Shaul. David then sent messengers to the men of Yabesh Gilead and said to them, You are blessed of Yahuwah, for you have shown this loving commitment to your master to Shaul, that you buried him. And now, Yahuwah show loving commitment and truth to you, and I am also going to do you good, because you have done this deed. But now let your hands be strengthened and be brave, for your master Shaul is dead, and also the house of Yahuda has anointed me sovereign over them. But Abner, son of Ner, commander of the army of Shaul, took Ishbosheth, the son of Shaul, and brought him over to Mahanaim, and set him up to reign over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Yisrael, and over Ephraim, and over Binyamin, and over all Yisrael. Ishbosheth, son of Shaul, was forty years old when he began to reign over Yisrael, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Yehuda followed David. And the time that David was sovereign in Hebron over the house of Yehuda was seven years and six new moons. And Abner, son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, son of Shaul, went out from Mahanaim to Gibbon. And Joab, son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David went out and met them by the pool of Gibbon. And they sat down one on one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. And Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now rise and compete before us. And Joab said, Let them rise. And they rose and went by number, twelve from Benjamin, followers of Ishbosheth, son of Shaul, and twelve from the servants of David, 
Each man took hold of his opponent by his head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side, and they fell down together, so that the place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is in Gibbon. And the battle was fierce that day, and Abner and the men of Israel were smitten before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel. And Asahel was light on his feet as one of the gazelles in the field. And Asahel pursued Abner. And in going, he did not turn aside to the right or to the left from following Abner. And Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Asahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left and lay a hold of one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. And Abner again said to Asahel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Joab? But he refused to turn aside. And Abner struck him with the blunt end of the spear in the stomach so that the spear came out of his back. And he fell down there and died on the spot. And it came to be that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, stood still. And Joab and Abishai pursued Abner. And the sun was going down, and they came to the hill of Ammah, which overlooks Gia by the way of the wilderness of Gibbon. And the children of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became a single company and took their stand on the top of the hill. And Abner called to Joab and said, Should the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it is bitter in the latter end? And when are you going to say to the people to turn back from pursuing their brothers? And Joab said, As Elohim lives, if you had not spoken, then all the people would have given up pursuing their brothers only the next morning. Joab then blew a shofar. And all the people halted and pursued Yisrael no further, nor did they fight any more. And Abner and his men went on all that night through the desert plain, and passed over the Yarden, and went through all Bithron, and they came to Mahanaim. And Joab turned back from pursuing Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants nineteen men, and Asahel. But the servants of David had stricken of Benjamin and Abner's men three hundred and sixty men who died. And they brought Asahel and buried him in his father's burial site, which is in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at daybreak. Chapter 3 And the fighting between the house of Shaul and the house of David was long drawn out. But David was going on and was strong, and the house of Shaul was going on and was weak. And sons were born to David in Hebron, and his firstborn was Ammon, by Ahinoam the Israelitess, and his second Kilab, by Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third Absalom, son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmai, sovereign of Geshur, and the fourth Adonaiah, son of Haggith, and the fifth, Shephatiah, son of Abital, and the sixth, Yithyarim, by David's wife Eglah. These were born to David in Hebron. And it came to be while there was fighting between the house of Shaul and the house of David, that Abner was strengthening himself in the house of Shaul. And Shaul had a concubine, whose name was Ritzpah, daughter of Eya. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? And Abner was very displeased at the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Yehuda, that I show loving commitment to the house of Shaul your father, to his brothers and to his friends today, and have not let you fall into the hands of David, that you charge me today with a sin concerning this woman? Elohim does so to Abner, And more also, if I do not do for David as Yahuwah has sworn to him, to cause the rain to pass over from the house of Shaul, and to raise up the throne of David over Israel and over Yehudah, 
from Dan to Beersheba. And he was unable to answer Abner another word because he feared him. And Abner sent messengers on his behalf to David, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your covenant with me, and see my hand is with you to bring all Israel to you. And David said, Good, I make a covenant with you. Only one matter I am asking of you. You do not see my face unless you first bring Michal, daughter of Shaul, when you come to see my face. David then sent messengers to Ishbosheth, son of Shaul, saying, Give me my wife, Michal, to whom I became engaged for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband went with her to Bahorim, going on and weeping behind her. And Abner said to him, Go, turn back. And he turned back. And Abner had a word with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you were seeking for David to be sovereign over you, and now do it. For Yahuwah has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I save my people, Israel from the hand of the Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. And Abner also went to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel and all the house of Benjamin. And Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron. And David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. And Abner said to David, Let me arise and go, and gather all Israel to my master the sovereign, and let them make a covenant with you, and you shall reign over all that your being desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And see, the servants of David and Joab came from a raid, and brought much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. And Joab and all the army that was with him came, and they reported to Joab, saying, Abner, son of Ner, came to the sovereign, and he sent him away, and he's gone in peace. And Joab went to the sovereign and said, What have you done? See, Abner has come to you? Why is it that you sent him away and he is already gone? You know that Abner, son of Ner, came to deceive you, to know you're going out and you're coming in, and to know all that you are doing. Joab then left David, and he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Sirah. But David did not know it. Thus Abner returned to Hebron, and Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him privately, and there struck him in the stomach, so that he died for the blood of Asahel, his brother. And when David heard it afterwards, he said, My reign and I are guiltless before Yahuwah forever of the blood of Abner, son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on his father's house, and let there never fail to be in the house of Joab one who has a discharge, or is a leper, or who is taking hold of a staff, or falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel at Gibbon in the battle. And David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your garments and gird yourselves with sackcloth and mourn for Abner. And sovereign David followed the coffin, and they buried Abner in Hebron. And the sovereign lifted up his voice and wept at the burial site of Abner, and all the people wept. And the sovereign sang a lament over Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into shackles, as one falls before sons of evil. So you fell, and all the people wept over him again. And all the people came to cause David to eat food while it was still day. But David swore, saying, Elohim, do so to me, and also if I taste bread, and whatever else till the sun goes down. And all the people took note of it, and it was good in their eyes, since whatever the sovereign did was good in the eyes of the people. And all the people and all Israel knew that day that it had not been the sovereign's intent to kill Abner, son of Ner. The sovereign also said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great one has fallen in Israel today? And I am weak today. Though anointed sovereign and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too harsh for me. 
Let Yahuwah repay the evil doer according to his evil. Chapter 4 And the son of Shaul heard that Abner had died in Hebron, and he lost heart, and all Yisrael was troubled. And the sons of Shaul had two men, commanders of bands, and the name of one was Bana, and the name of the other was Rechav, sons of Rimon the Berothite, the children of Benjamin. For Be'eroth was also reckoned to Benjamin, because the Berothites fled to Gitaim and have been sojourners there until this day. Now Jonathan, son of Shaul, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Shaul and Jonathan came from Yisrael. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to be as she hurried to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. So the sons of Ramon, the Berothite, Rechab and Bana, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who was lying on his bed at noon. And they came into the midst of the house to fetch wheat, and they struck him in the stomach. And Rechab and Bana, his brother, escaped. Thus they came into the house when he was lying on his bed in the bedroom, and they struck him and slew him and beheaded him. And they took his head and went the way of the desert plain all night and brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron and said to the sovereign, See the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Shaul, your enemy, who sought your life. So Yahuwah has given my master the sovereign vengeance on Shaul and his seed this day. And David answered Rechab and Bana, his brother, sons of Ramon the Berothite, and said to them, As Yahuwah lives, who has ransomed my life out of all distress, when someone reported to me, saying, See, Shaul is dead. And he was a bearer of good news in his own eyes. I then took hold of him and killed him in Ziglag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more when wrong men have killed a righteous man in his own house on his bed? Should I not now require his blood at your hand and remove you from the earth? And David commanded his young men, and they killed him, and cut off their hands and feet, and hanged them by the pool in Hebron. And they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the burial site of Abner in Hebron. Chapter 5 And all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Look, we are your bone and your flesh. Formerly, when Shaul was sovereign over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And Yahuwah said to you, Shepherd my people, Israel, and be ruler over Israel. And all the elders of Israel came to the sovereign at Hebron. And sovereign David made a covenant with them at Hebron before Yahuwah. And they anointed David sovereign over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron, he reigned over Yehuda seven years and six new moons. And in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-seven years over all Israel and Yehuda. And the sovereign and his men went to Jerusalem against the Yebusites, the inhabitants of the land. And they spoke to David, saying, Except you take away the blind and the lame, you are not going to come in here. Thinking, David is not going to come in here. But David captured the stronghold of Zion, the city of David. And David said on that day, Anyone who strikes the Yebusites, let him go by the water shaft and take the lame and the blind who are hated by David's being. That is why they say the blind and the lame do not come into the house. And David dwelt in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from Milo and inward. And David went on and became great. And Yahuwah Elohim of hosts was with him. Now Hiram, sovereign of Zor, sent messengers to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons. And they built a house for David. And David knew that Yahuwah had established him as sovereign over Israel and that he had exalted his reign because of his people, Israel. And David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he had come from Hebron, and more sons and daughters were born to David. And these were the names of those born to him in Jerusalem: 
Shamua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Shelema, and Yifhar, and Elshua, and Nafeg, and Yafia, and Elshama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. And the Philistines heard that they had anointed David sovereign over Israel. And all the Philistines went up to search for David. But David heard and went down to the stronghold. And the Philistines came and spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Do I go up against the Philistines? Do you give them into my hand? And Yahuwah said to David, Go up, for I shall certainly give the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Peratzim, and David struck them there. And he said, Yahuwah has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. So he called the name of that place Baal Peratzim. And they left their images there, and David and his men took them away. And the Philistines again came up and were spread out in the valley of Rephaim. And when David inquired of Yahuwah, he said, Do not go up. Turn around behind them, and you shall come upon them in the front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be when you hear the sound of stepping in the tops of the mulberry trees, then act promptly. For then Yahuwah shall go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so, as Yahuwah commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Chapter 6 Now David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David rose up and went with all the peoples who were with him from Baali Yahuda, to bring up from there the ark of Elohim that is called by the name, the name of Yahuwah of hosts, who dwells between the Cherubim. And they placed the ark of Elohim on a new wagon and brought it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, were leading the new wagon. And they brought it from the house of Abinadab, which is on the hill, with the ark of Elohim. And Ahio was walking before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were dancing before Yahuwah with all instruments of fir wood, and with lyres, and with harps, and with tambourines, and with sistrums, and with cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out toward the ark of Elohim and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. And the wrath of Yahuwah burned against Uzzah, and Elohim struck him there for the fault. And he died there by the ark of Elohim. And David was displeased because Yahuwah had broken out against Uzzah, and he called the name of the place Peretz Uzzah until this day. And David was afraid of Yahuwah on that day, and he said, How shall the ark of Yahuwah come to me? And David would not move the ark of Yahuwah with him into the city of David, but David turned it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of Yahuwah remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three new moons. And Yahuwah blessed Obed-Edom and all his house. And it was reported to the sovereign David, saying, Yahuwah has blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and all that he has because of the ark of Elohim. David then went and brought up the ark of Elohim from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And it came to be when those bearing the ark of Yahuwah had gone six steps that they slaughtered bulls and fatted sheep. And David danced before Yahuwah with all his might. And David was wearing a linen shoulder garment. Thus David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahuwah with shouting and with the voice of a shofar. And it came to be when the ark of Yahuwah came into the city of David that Michal, daughter of Shaul, looked through the window and saw sovereign David leaping and dancing before Yahuwah. And she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of Yahuwah in and set it in its place in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And David brought ascending offerings before Yahuwah and peace offerings. And when David had finished bringing ascending offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Yahuwah of hosts. And he apportioned to all the people, to all the crowd of Israel, from man even to woman, to each one a loaf of bread and a measure and a cake of raisins. 
and all the people left each one to his house. And David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Shaul, came out to meet David and said, How esteemed was the sovereign of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the female servants of his servants, as one of the foolish ones shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michal, Before Yahuwah, who chose me instead of your father and all his house, commanded me to be ruler over the people of Yahuwah, over Yisrael, so I danced before Yahuwah. And I shall be even more slight than this, and shall be more humble in my own eyes. But as for the female servants of whom you have spoken, by them I am esteemed. And Michal, the daughter of Shaul, had no children until the day of her death. Chapter 7 And it came to be when the sovereign was dwelling in his house, And Yahuwah had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the sovereign said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I am dwelling in a house of cedar, but the ark of Elohim dwells within curtains. And Nathan said to the sovereign, Go, do all that is in your heart, for Yahuwah is with you. And it came to be that night that the word of Yahuwah came to Nathan, saying, Go, And say to my servant David, Thus says Yahuwah, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from its riam, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a dwelling place. Wherever I have walked with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel? saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? And now say to my servant David, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the flock to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great ones who are on the earth. And I shall appoint a place for my people Israel, and shall plant them, and they shall dwell in a place of their own and no longer be afraid. Neither shall the children of wickedness oppress them again as at first. Even from the day I commanded rulers over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. And Yahuwah has declared to you that he would make you a house. When your days are filled, and you rest with your fathers, I shall raise up your seed after you, who comes from your inward parts and shall establish his reign. He does build a house for my name, and I shall establish the throne of his reign forever. I am to be his father, and he is my son. If he does perversely, I shall reprove him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my loving commitment does not turn aside from him, as I turned it aside from Shaul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your reign are to be steadfast forever before you, and your throne is established forever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. And sovereign David went in and sat before Yahuwah, And he said, Who am I, O Master Yahuwah? And what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this is a small matter in your eyes, O Master Yahuwah. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. And this is the Torah, O man, O Master Yahuwah. And what more does David say to you for you, Master Yahuwah? Know your servant. Because of your word, and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to make it known to your servant. You are great indeed, O Master Yahuwah, for there is none like you, and there is no Elohim but you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, Like Yisrael, the one nation on the earth whom Elohim went to ransom for himself as a people, 
to make for himself a name and to do for your greatness and awesome deeds for your land before your people, whom you ransomed for yourself from Mitzrayim, from the nations and their mighty ones. And you have established for yourself your people, Yisrael, as your own people forever. And you, Yahuwah, have become their Elohim. And now, O Yahuwah Elohim, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. And let your name be made great forever, saying, Yahuwah of hosts is the Elohim over Yisrael. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yisrael, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I build you a house. Therefore your servant has taken heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Master Yahuwah, you are Elohim, and your words are true. And you have spoken this goodness to your servant. And now be pleased to bless the house of your servant to be before you forever. For you, O Master Yahuwah, have spoken it. And with your blessing, let the house of your servant be blessed forever. Chapter 8 And after this it came to be that David struck the Philistines and humbled them. And David took the bridle of the mother city out of the hand of the Philistines. He also struck Moab and measured them off with a line, causing them to lie down on the earth. With two lines he measured off those to be put to death, and with one complete line those to be kept alive. And the Moabites became David's servants and brought presents. David also struck Hadadezer, son of Rehob, sovereign of Zobah, as he went to restore his rule at the river Euphrates. And David captured from him 1,700 horsemen and 20,000 foot soldiers. And David destroyed all the chariots, but he left of them a hundred chariots. And the Armenians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, sovereign of Zobah. And David struck 22,000 of the Armenians. Then David put watchposts in Aram of Damascus. And the Armenians became David's servants and brought presents. And Yahuwah saved David wherever he went. And David took the shields of gold which were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Bethah and from Berothai, cities of Hadadezer, sovereign David took very much bronze. And Toai, sovereign of Hamath, heard that David had stricken all the army of Hadadezer. So Toai sent Yoram his son to the sovereign David to ask peace of him and bless him because he had fought against Hadadezer and struck him. For Hadadezer had battles with Toai. And Yoram brought with him objects of silver and objects of gold and objects of bronze. Sovereign David also set these apart to Yahuwah along with the silver and gold that he had set apart from all the nations which he had humbled from Aram and Moab, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadezer, son of Rehob, sovereign of Zobah. And David made a name for himself when he returned from striking 18,000 Arminians in the Valley of Salt. And he put watchposts in Edom. Throughout all Edom he put watchposts. And all the Edomites became David's servants, And Yahuwah saved David wherever he went. And David reigned over all Yisrael. And David was doing right ruling and righteousness to all his people. And Joab, son of Zeruiah, was over the army. And Jehoshaphat, son of Achilud, was recorder. And Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahamalek, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. And Sariah was the scribe. And Beniyahu, son of Jehoiada, was over both the Kerathites and the Pelathites, and David's sons were priests. Chapter 9 And David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Shaul? 
that it might show him loving commitment because of Jonathan. And the house of Shaul had a servant whose name was Ziba. And they had called him to David, and the sovereign said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, Your servant. And the sovereign said, Is there not still someone of the house of Shaul, so that I show him the loving commitment of Elohim? And Ziba said to the sovereign, There is still a son of Jonathan, lame in his feet. So the sovereign said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the sovereign, See, he is in the house of Bakir, son of Amael, in Lodebar. And sovereign David sent and brought him out of the house of Bakir, son of Amael, from Lodebar. And Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Shaul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. And David said, Mephibosheth! And he answered, Here is your servant! David then said to him, Do not fear, for I shall certainly show you loving commitment because of Jonathan your father, and shall return to you all the land of Shaul your grandfather, and let you eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should turn to such a dead dog as I? And the sovereign called Ziba, servant of Shaul, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Shaul and to all his house. And you and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in its yield, and your master's son shall have food to eat. But let Mephibosheth, your master's son, eat bread at my table always. And Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And Ziba said to the sovereign, According to all that my master the sovereign has commanded his servant, so your servant does. As for Mephibosheth, said the servant, he shall eat at my table as one of the sons of the sovereign. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth was dwelling in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the sovereign's table, and he was lame in both his feet. Chapter 10 And after this it came to be that the sovereign of the children of Ammon died, and Hanun his son reigned in his place. And David said, Let me show loving commitment to Hanun son of Nachash, as his father showed loving commitment to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And when David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon, the chiefs of the children of Ammon said to Hanun their master, Is David esteeming your father in your eyes in that he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So Hanun took David's servants and shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle as far as their buttocks, and sent them away. And they informed David, and he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the sovereign said, Wait at Yericho until your beards have grown, and then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had become a stench to David, the children of Ammon sent and hired Armenians of Beth Rehob, and the Armenians of Zobah, 20,000 foot soldiers, and the sovereign of Makah, 1,000 men, and the men of Tob, 12,000 men. And David heard and sent Joab and the entire army, the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate. And the Armenians of Zobah and Rehob and the men of Tob and Makkah were by themselves in the field. And Joab saw that the battle line was against him before and behind. And he chose out of all the chosen men of Israel and put them in battle array against the Armenians. And the rest of the people he gave under the hands of Abishai, his brother, and he put them in battle array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Armenians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the children of Ammon are too strong for you, then I shall come and help you. Be strong, and let us show strength for our people and for the cities of our Elohim. And let Yahuwah do what is good in his eyes. And Joab drew near, and the people with him to battle against Aram. 
and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Armenians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai and went into the city. And Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. And Aram saw that they were smitten before Israel, and they gathered together. And Hadadezer sent and brought out the Armenians who were beyond the river, and they came to Chelam. And Shobak, the commander of the army of Hadadezer, went before them. And it was reported to David. And he gathered all Israel and passed over the Yarden and came to Chelam. And Aram set themselves in battle array against David, and they fought with him. And Aram fled before Israel, and David killed seven hundred charioteers and forty thousand horsemen of Aram. And he struck Shobach, commander of their army, who died there. And all the sovereigns, the servants of Hadadezer, saw that they were smitten by Israel, and made peace with Israel, and served them. And the Armenians were afraid to help the children of Ammon any more. Chapter 11 And it came to be at the turn of the year, at the time sovereigns go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, And they destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. And it came to be at evening time, that David rose up from his bed and walked about on the roof of the sovereign's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very good to look at. And David sent and asked about the woman, and one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers to fetch her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansing herself from her uncleanness. And she returned to her house. And the woman conceived and sent and informed David and said, I am pregnant. Then David sent to Joab, Send Uriah the Hittite to me. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And Uriah came to him. And David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the fighting was going. And David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out from the sovereign's house, and a gift from the sovereign followed him. But Uriah lay down at the door of the sovereign's house with all the servants of his master, and did not go down to his house. And they informed David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house. So David said to Uriah, Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Yisrael and Yehuda are dwelling in booths, and my master Joab and the servants of my master are encamped in the open fields. And I, should I go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your being lives, let me not do this. And David said to Uriah, Remain here today also, and tomorrow I let you go. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. And David called him, and he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And at evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his master, but he did not go down to his house. And it came to be in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter, saying, Set Uriah in the front of the toughest battle, and you shall turn away from him, and he shall be stricken and shall die. And it came to be as Joab watched the city that he appointed Uriah to the place where he knew they were brave men. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab. And some of the people of the servants of David fell. And Uriah the Hittite also died. And Joab sent and reported to David all the events of the battle. And commanded the messenger, saying, When you have finished reporting all the events of the battle to the sovereign, then it shall be if the sovereign's wrath rises and he says to you, Why did you go so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Yerubasheth? Was it not a woman who threw an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died in Thabetz? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah the Hittite, 
is also dead. And the messengers went and came and reported to David all with which Joab had sent him. And the messenger said to David, The men have been mighty against us and came out to us in the field, but we drove them back as far as the entrance of the gate. And the archers shot from the wall at your servants, and some of the sovereign servants are dead. And your servant Uriah, the Hittite, is also dead. When David said to the messenger, Say to Joab, Do not let this matter be evil in your eyes, for the sword devours one as well as another. Strengthen your attack against the city and overthrow it, and strengthen him. And the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, and she lamented for her husband. And when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the deed that David had done was evil in the eyes of Yahuwah. Chapter 12 Then Yahuwah sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich one had flocks and herds, very many. But the poor one had only one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and kept alive. And it grew up with him and with his children together. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. And the wrath of David burned greatly against the man. And he said to Nathan, As Yahuwah lives, the man who has done this is a son of death. Also he has to repay fourfold for the lamb, because he did this deed and because he had no compassion. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I anointed you sovereign over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Shaul, and I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Israel and Yahuda. And if that were not enough, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the word of Yahuwah to do evil in his eyes? You have struck Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and his wife you took to be your wife, and you have killed him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And now the sword does not turn aside from your house, because you have despised me and have taken wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am raising up evil against you from your own house and shall take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun, for you did it in secret. But I shall do this deed before all Israel and before the sun. And David said to Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. And Nathan said to David, Also, Yahuwah has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have greatly scorned Yahuwah, the child also who is born to you shall certainly die. And Nathan went to his house, and Yahuwah smote the child that Uriah's wife had borne to David, and he was sick. And David sought Elohim for the child, and David fasted and went in and spent all night lying on the ground. So the elders of his house stood up over him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. And on the seventh day it came to be that the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to inform him that the child was dead, for they said, Look! While the child was still alive, we spoke to him, and he would not listen to our voice. And how do we say to him that the child is dead? Then he shall do evil. And David saw that his servants were whispering, 
and David perceived that the child was dead. Then David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. David then rose up from the ground and washed and anointed himself and changed his garments. And he went into the house of Yahuwah and bowed himself, then came to his own house and asked, and they set food before him, so he ate. And his servant said to him, What is this that you have done? You fasted and wept because of the living child, but when the child died, you rose up and ate food. And he said, While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows whether Yahuwah shows favor unto me, and the child shall live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Am I able to bring him back again? I am going to him, but he does not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife and went in to her and lay with her. So she bore him a son, and he called his name Shelomah. And Yahuwah loved him, and sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and called his name Yedidiah, because of Yahuwah. And Yoab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon and captured the royal city. And Yoab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah, and I have captured the city's water supply. And now gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and capture it, lest I capture the city and it be called after my name. And David gathered all the people and went to Rabbah and fought against it and captured it. And he took their sovereign's crown from his head, and its weight was a talent of gold with precious stones. And it was on David's head, and he brought out the spoil of the city a very great amount. And he brought out the people who were in it, and set them to the saw, and to the sharp instruments of iron, and to axes of iron, and made them pass over to the brickworks. And so he did with all the cities of the children of Ammon. And David and all the people returned to Jerusalem, 